If you ever saw a wooden surfboard, it was probably hanging in somebody's house or underneath the deck. But kind of in the last 10 or 15 years, wood has made a big comeback. They surf wonderfully. That's beautiful and it feels great to be on one of them. I always had a love for wood and kind of passionate about things that went in the water. I've kind of been around wooden boats most of my life. There's just so much character. The way they're built, the stories that come with them, a lot of that has translated over to why we build surfboards the way we do. When we first started thinking about building surfboards, wood was the natural material we chose. They have a very high strength to weight ratio. Wooden surfboards have the longest history of use in the surf world than any other material. People have been surfing wooden surfboards since kind of the first documented history of people riding waves. The board starts in CAD, where we take a 3D model, break down the shape and kind of create frames and templates and all the inner parts of the board that we get cut on a CNC machine. We take those frames and we just pop them out, assemble the frame into a kind of a skeleton. We go out to our lumber shed, pick a bunch of cedar, and bring them into our mill shop, put glue along the edges, clamp it all together into a panel. Everything's book matched. You have symmetry in the colors and texture of the wood. Cut your outline. Take our assembled frame, gently put it down right on top of the plank. Once that foundation is started, you're basically building up the three-dimensional shape, the outside part of the board, using lots of strips that kind of interlock and fit together. Every piece of wood is going to be different, and it's all going to react differently. There are frustrations with it, but I think that's one of the things that keeps it challenging. You learn to read the kind of what the grain lines are doing and what the color of the wood is telling you. Once those rails are cleaned up, we put our top planks on. It's a little bit like putting a lid on a box. It's like, this is it. Whatever's inside that board is staying inside that board. And by tensioning some rope, you can clamp the two together. It's like a time capsule. What makes our boards unique are they are built right here in York. They're built using material that grows right here in the state of Maine. They're built 100% by hand by local craftspeople and surfers. There is a lot of time that goes into these boards, between 40 and 60 hours start to finish. We wanted to build surfboards that were as hollow as they could be, but still be strong enough to work well. Too light and they don't surf well, but too heavy and they don't surf well. So there's a, there's a balance point there and that's where we try to be. Taking the board off the rocker table once the top has gone on, that is by far one of my top favorite parts. It's just you and a shaping stand, a board, and a hand plane. Everything else is out of your view. It's simple, it's pleasurable, it's quiet. You can be with your thoughts and you can just kind of be present. There's something about taking a nice sharp edge tool to a beautiful piece of wood and feeling the curls coming off and knowing that every pass that you're making, you're kind of getting it closer and closer to what you have in mind. Once we've shaped it down and the board's looking like it's supposed to look like, time for it to go into the glassing room. Four ounce fiberglass, laying it over the board, draping it over the edges, cutting it, applying epoxy, and on the board. Once both sides are lamb coated, it's time to put in the hardware. Drill and router and install the fin box. And on the other side, we drill and put in the leash plug and a vent. There's a lot of air just naturally inside the board, and that air wants to expand and contract with temperature changes. And that vent has a little piece of Gore-Tex fabric in it, and it allows air to kind of breathe both ways, but it doesn't allow water to get in. Once all that hardware is put in, it goes back into the glassing room. We brush a nice, beautiful, thick coat of epoxy over the whole surface, and that we call a gloss coat. That's supposed to look beautiful and glossy and shiny and flawless you get to see that board come to life. Whatever the colors in the wood, they really come out. 
it just makes it look like candy. You just want to touch it and run your hands down it and it's just kind of the icing on the cake. Once everything is hard, we put it into what we call the oven, get that epoxy to cure, really kind of bake it and just get it to harden. Put in the fin, screw in the vent, and ship it out. We just love the idea of building something that's sustainable and long lasting and made by hand. Kind of gives you a deeper connection to the product over something you might buy on a shelf. When a customer gets the board, they feel it. They 100% feel the amount of work and the amount of passion that went into the board. So I'm not really looking at hours and efficiency. We're looking at like doing it right and uh, enjoying it as we go.